This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome to The Watch Guys. That's right, it's another week and it's another deep delve into one of the watches from my watch collection. This week it's Rolex, it's a historic model that has been brought bang up to date, it tweaks the nostalgia nipple, and it's a seriously cool timepiece. This week's watch is the Rolex Sea Dweller 50th Anniversary. So, the Sea Dweller 50th Anniversary. This was launched in 2017, 50 years since the 1967 launch of the original Sea Dweller. More about that in a minute. I got this one in 2019, and I have to say, in the current Rolex lineup, this is probably the one that looks the most historic and the most like one of the originals. Before we get started, a quick wristwatch check, and under the jumper this week, I've got a little bit of a curious one this is. This is a Bulgari Octo, and this one has got a black rubber strap, black dial. It's from 1996, it's got a 41 millimeter case, blue hour markers, it's a limited edition, and I believe I saw it first on one of Matt Farah's podcasts. So what we're gonna do this week is I'm gonna take you through the history of the Rolex Sea Dweller. We're gonna do a full unboxing of this little number, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I like it and why it's part of the collection. And I'm gonna also tell you a little bit about how I bought it. So if that sounds good with you, we will crack on. Now, although the Sea Dweller dates back to 1967, the history of it is actually a little bit dull because over that time period, you essentially had a very similar watch throughout. There are quite a few variations, but they pretty much all look the same. If you were a serious diver in the 50s, you basically had two choices if you wanted something iconic on your wrist. That was the Rolex Submariner or the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. But when you started to go really deep and you started to need helium in your mix, there started to be a few problems with those watches, notably when you went really deep and then had to decompress. Some divers found that the helium that had seeped into the watch itself during the decompression process would actually pop the crystal out of the watch. Rolex began experimenting with watches from much deeper depths than the Submariner would currently go to, and in 1960 they actually put a deep sea special model on the outside of the Bathyscape Trieste, which was piloted by the US Navy's Don Walsh and oceanographer Jean-Luc, oh sorry, Jacques Picard, and when they descended deep to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is a depth of 10,916 meters, which is 37,800 feet, on the outside of the Bathyscape was a deep sea special Rolex, which fortunately survived. So to cope with those extreme depths and to prevent the crystals being popped out, Rolex began experimenting with a new piece of technology called the helium escape valve, which you can see here, on this modern version. This was initially put on Submariners, but then in 1967, Rolex launched a brand new model, the Sea Dweller. This was reference 1665. It's now known as the Double Red because it's got two lines of red writing on the dial. Although there are a number of single red dial Sea Dwellers around, which are therefore incredibly rare and therefore phenomenally expensive. And pretty soon, Sea Dwellers sported helium escape valves too and became the go-to watch for super deep divers. Rolex is then famously supplied Submariners and then Sea Dwellers to Comex, which is a French commercial diving operation. And in fact, those Comex dial branded watches are now highly sought after. If you can get one of those, you're a very, very lucky person. The double red carried on until 1977, so a 10-year period, with a few dial variations just to make those collectors go crazy in later years. You'll note, incidentally, that those early sea dwellers have got a date window, but never a cyclops, because it was felt that the cyclops would be a fundamental weakness on such a deep diving watch. It was only later on when technology allowed it that the cyclops appeared on a sea dweller. From 1977 to 1983, you got the 1665, but this time with all white lettering on it. 
The maximum depth was 2,000 feet and it featured a plexiglass crystal. Then in 1978 came the 16660 reference, the triple six. The plexiglass was upgraded to sapphire crystal and the maximum depth was doubled to 4,000 feet. It also featured the new 3035 movement. You see what I mean about the watches being a little bit dull and similar? We're only halfway through. In 1989, Rolex launched the incredibly memorable 16600. This had the new 3135 movement, which gave increased power reserve, but very little else changed, and this watch actually lasted for 20 years. Now it gets a little bit interesting. In 2008, Rolex launched the Deep Seed line of Sea Dweller. So this was like a super pumped up Arnold Schwarzenegger version of the Sea Dweller. This could descend to a scarcely believable 12,800 feet, three times the previous depth of the Sea Dweller. And this monster had a five millimeter thick sapphire crystal, serochrome bezel and titanium case back. This was the daddy of dive watches. 2009 saw the standard Sea Dweller retired in favor of the deep sea. And it didn't come back until 2014 when it reappeared at the smaller 40 millimeter size, reference 116600. This is also known as the 4000 and it actually only lasted two years, the shortest of any Sea Dweller. And this one is actually regarded as a bit of a future classic because any Rolex that only lasts a short amount of time seems to become unfathomably valuable in the future. In 2014, you got this little number. Now this is the first sort of special edition Sea Dweller that was created. This is the James Cameron D Blue or Deep Blue and it was created by Rolex to commemorate the fact that film director James Cameron decided to descend to the bottom of the Mariana Trench just like Walsh and Picard did in the 60s. He took along a new experimental Rolex which subsequently became this model. And then finally, after 50 years of pretty much the same looking watch, you get this launched in 2017, the 50th anniversary, the 126600, characterized by the fact that it uses a single line of red text on the dial, just like those early prototypes. It's also got the 3235 movement. It's right up to date for Rolex. It's got a 43 millimeter case size. It is a super classy watch and I think a modern classic. Now it's time to go into Unboxo Vision and I'll take you through the full unboxing of this very special Rolex. As you can see, standard Rolex box and you've got that famous green box inner with that ruche leather pattern on the top of it, an iconic box, which in this case is a little bit hard to get out. And inside, there you go, that's it. There's the 50th anniversary. Obviously I've still got the tags. In the back compartment, you will see the now familiar registration card kept in its wallet along with the guarantee. And then the operating instructions also sit, as with all Rolexes, in that special pocket at the back. And there it is. Classic Rolex packaging, very simple, very iconic, no messing, no frills. Boom, there it is. So then why did I buy this watch? Why do I find it so interesting? Well, I think it comes down to that red writing and the anniversary status of this watch. It's not officially called the 50th anniversary, but the fact that it was launched 50 years after that original is a pretty clear sign from Rolex that this is a potential future classic. This is the 126 600. It's the current model. There are lots of rumors that it will be discontinued by Rolex fairly soon, but none of it has been confirmed as yet. This one was made in 2018. I bought it a year later. This one features the 3235 movement. It's self-winding. It's got a 43 millimeter case and obviously it's oyster steel. But being an owner of various Submariners and actually also being the owner of this original James Cameron deep sea. I still think the 50th anniversary has a place in the collection because it is a unique moment in time. We've got the Cyclops back over the date window. That's a new one that came with this model. It's a slightly thicker case so you've got that helium escape valve on there so therefore it looks unlike the other Submariners that I've got and obviously it looks completely different to the James Cameron. This James Cameron incidentally I will go into in a special full episode soon. Will this one become super collectible in the future? I'm not sure. I think the uber collectible status probably 
belongs to the 4000, which is the one that was only produced for two years. So how and where did I buy this? Well, unusually, this one I didn't buy from the Edinburgh Watch Company, although they do very often have these models in stock. I actually got this from Bloombar Watches in London. This was a company that I'd bought an IWC Ingenieur from, coming to this channel soon, and therefore I'd already built up a relationship with them, I could trust them, I knew that they had good levels of service, and I actually visited them in person to pick up another watch, which sadly had already sold. So I kind of knew the guys a little bit more, and therefore I was comfortable buying this watch. So there you have it, the Rolex Sea Dweller 50th anniversary, a real gem in the current collection, they're not impossible to get hold of, and if you fancy something that's a little bit chunkier, but also has that nostalgic tip of the hat, then please look into it. This is a really solid dive watch, which can trace its roots right back to the start of dive watches themselves, and I think it looks great on the wrist. Perhaps you don't want something as ridiculously massive as the James Cameron, but you want something a little bit beefier than a Submariner, this is a good option. Thanks for watching this episode on one of the latest Rolex Sea Dwellers and you found the history of the Sea Dweller interesting. If you like what you see, please subscribe, leave comments below this video and there will be another Watch Guys episode along next week.